Hi, my name is Nick, and today we're going to talk a little bit about setting up a Malcolm sensor and a touch of bass on Hedgehog Linux. We want to talk about things like minimum requirements of setting up a Malcolm sensor, the types of sensors that can be used, and the hardware contained within. Finally, we also want to talk about just how flexible the Malcolm solution can be. Building a sensor to deploy and collect data for Malcolm has a couple different system requirements, and some are more important than others. First, let's talk about the CPU. Now, if you only want to collect a very narrow range of traffic, you may only need somewhere between six to eight cores, and that can pull off just about any OT enclave. However, if you want to look at capturing an entire network from the edge point near a router, then you might look at something that's closer between 10 and 16 cores if you're probably going to be collecting more than a terabyte a day or terabytes a day. Next, let's address memory. Memory can be pretty simply set up with eight gigabytes for most sensors, 16 if you really wanna push the limits, and that'll give you pretty much as much space as you need to pull off any type of captures. Now, one of the most important and flexible portions of setting up your sensors are the storage solutions. And this is really gonna be determined by your requirements, your management's requests, or really just the preferences that you've set for yourself. You can use solid states or hard drives, that's entirely your choice. However, the size of that storage is going to come down to knowing how much you wanna capture per day, or how much you intend to capture per day, how many days your retention policy mandates, and then multiplying that by 1.1 to add a little bit of a buffer zone there for the OS and other things to operate. It's important to note that Malcolm and the sensors by default will roll over PCAP storage when you run out. So if you're capturing at a slower rate, you'll hold on to data for a little bit longer. And if you're capturing at a rate that's higher than you expected, you won't have the full retention that you were hoping for. Finally is network interfaces. Now a sensor needs to have a minimum of two network interfaces. And typically a one gig connection is what we recommend. Now, you're gonna know better than anybody else the transmission and receiving rate of any given network flow within your environment. And you need to make sure that you account for both of those when setting up whatever network interfaces on your cards. One network interface card will be for a management interface. The other one is gonna be the one that gets directly plugged into the span or tap on your network switch. Now, it's worth noting also that you can have as many network interface cards or at, in general as many ports as you like. It all comes down to how many different switches you need to span or tap into. And again, it's worth noting that a 10 gig link is actually going to be generating something like 20 gigs or something near there with 10 up and 10 down combined. So make sure that whatever the throughput is of the NIC that you've chosen will actually keep up with the network traffic that you're intending to see. The second thing we want to cover is Malcolm sensor hardware. And we covered what goes inside the case, but not the case itself. Now, this is where things can get a little bit creative, and we'll talk a little bit more about the creativity of what your case can provide, but we will set a baseline. Unfortunately, Malcolm is a little too robust and not quite built for something like a Raspberry Pi, so sorry for the education, folks. However, you can pretty much set it up on any x86 processor computer. If you were feeling creative, you could set it up on a portable PC, something like this, and set up an extra NIC through USB. Also, if you're trying to mimic something close to what we've been using as a test run and really what's been deploying in most of our networks, you can go for something a little bit more robust in a case like this. And we'll talk about why a case like this is pretty beneficial, but notice there are no fans. It's all passively and there are enough network interfaces to go around. This is made by a company called OnLogic and that's not an endorsement, but just so you know, if you like that one. Finally, you can really deploy on any other type of hardware that suits your needs. If not mandated to be in a particular space, feel free to set up a server on a rack, 1U to 8U, whatever really suits your needs. So long as you have those requirements with RAM, CPU, and storage, anything can really work out for you. 
The final point we want to discuss is just about the flexibility of deploying this sensor wherever you really feel it suits you best. This could be in a substation, on a manufacturing floor, in your plant, wherever that may be, or in a server room. We talked about using a server rack, and if that suits your needs and your OT networks funnel through that server room, that's perfect. A case like this that we showed before has no fans and no airflow. And it's not that it's airtight or IP rated or anything like that, but what's important is that it's passively cool. So it's not pulling dust or debris or excessive heat into the case because the case itself is what sheds the heat. Now, think about environments that that could work in and keep in mind there are cases that are designed to be dust proof, waterproof, heat resistant, and a multitude of other types of features that will help make your solution fit your needs. It's also worth noting that you may not need or benefit from just one hardware instance. A lot of instances we've seen customers using something of a network packet broker, or they already have a network packet broker in place, and what that does is it funnels and replicates and duplicates and channels off packets to different places, and one of those places is the actual sensor. So there are more considerations to keep in mind when deploying Malcolm into your environment, but for the most part, your hardware selections can reflect what your needs are in a very customizable fashion, and we look forward to seeing what solutions work best for you. Now we've discussed all considerations that should be talked about when you're considering setting up a Malcolm sensor and running Hedgehog Linux on it. These include minimum requirements, the types of cases, and the flexibility of what those cases can provide you. If you have any questions or need further documentation about Hedgehog Linux and what it can do for your PCAP and Zeek collection, feel free to look at the GitHub page on github.com slash gov slash Malcolm. Or if you want to talk directly to developers, send an email to malcolm at inl.gov. That's M-A-L-C-O-L-M -L -L at inl.gov. My name's Nick and thank you. Have a great day.